Oh, for the funeral? Yeah. Oh, to be honest. Oh, that, yeah, well, that's, Where was she? Yeah, she's at the very top with the green. Oh, no, okay. Cool. Come on, sure. Alright, yeah. Alright, you go in the front. Don't for the front.
so just kill him. Like, yeah, what about you do? Oh. I'm just gonna get over you though. Thank you. 
ask his forgiveness, for he is gentle and full of compassion. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the eternal joy of his kingdom, where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen. So we stand now, if you're able, to sing the hymn in the service booklets, Amazing Grace. Diana will sing up the first verse and we join in with verses 2 and the following verses.
brief, but our faith in God may be strengthened. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated? A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. <coughs> we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith as is in, a, in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God, so we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look at not what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, <coughs> but what cannot be seen is eternal. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever thought what was going on in the world when you were born? Well, I want to take you on a little <coughs> journey to have a peek at some of the events that were taking place just 55 years ago to the year of 1968. In July, the BBC sitcom Dad's Army was first shown on telly. In September, the new school year in England saw the first local authorities adopt a three-tier education system, where first schools, middle schools, and secondary modern schools were introduced. On the 16th of September, the GPO divided its post into first class and second class services. And there were a number of <coughs> excuse me, important births as well in that year. Daniel Craig, Patsy Kensit, Catherine Tate, Matt Letitia, and last but certainly not least, the little baby girl herself, Carmen Beverly Reed. Carmen was born on Friday the 16th of February 1968 to Marjorie Lee Clark and Chester Reed in Tameside General Hospital, and she was the eldest of her brothers and sisters, Carlo, Chester and Chelsea. She attended Hurst Infant School, better known as the Red School on Queen's Road in Ashton, and then moved to Hurst Methodist School in Juniors. Her last school was at Stamford High School on Mosley Road, no longer now then. Leaving school, Carmen started work as a machinist at Meaners on Cedar Street in Hurst, where they stitch knickers. Just, just think of Underworld in college. She then did a stint at the Dollars Club in Gloucester, where she was paid £100 on that day. The George Best had been booked to perform an opening there. Her next job was modelling lingerie and wedding dresses. What's all this about lingerie? <laughs> Growing up in Ashton,
Ashton, Carmen would go with her mum, dad and family to Blackpool to enjoy their holidays. And having many childhood memories with her auntie Leslie, she'd go to Alderley Edge in Cheshire every school holidays to spend time with Leslie and her nana Jane. Carmen then became the proud mum of Carmel, Cody and Kale, and then even more so when she was presented with her grandchildren, Carlton, Kai and Caden. She was also step nigh to Lily Press and had many great nieces and nephews, all of whom she absolutely adored. And of course her family meant the world to Carmen. Later holidays with her children included a visit to London, to Chester Zoo, and to Halkidiki in Greece, where Cody went missing. Sounds like me. For a number of hours, the mummy turned and got pushed into the pool. There's also a story about Kale, who's now told Carmen not to get in any cakes because he was so greedy. <laughs> Actually a bit like Carmen. But Carmen would help him and let him bake cakes, but every time she let him scoff the lot. <laughs> Carmen loved living by the seaside in Blackpool, and she and Carmen and Branson Carlton would often go to the beach, or they'd go to the zoo, which Carmen loved. Carmen was a very athletic person. She ran for East Cheshire Harriers, and ran like the wind, so I'm told. She was also a good roundest player and good at throwing the javelin, all of which she picked up when at Stamford High. Carmen would socialise with people by working in bars and in her younger days, she wore way out stuff. <laughs> she became a punk, then a mod. <coughs> so you can imagine, when she was out shopping, all the different kind of clothes she'd love to buy. And her clothes were everywhere. She'd just buy clothes for the sake of it. Well, I buy them, I buy On one occasion at Christmas, on Boxing Day actually, a wild bird walked into the kitchen. The kids, the kids asked if they, should, if they could keep it, which they did for three months, and called it Robin. Because he looked like one. And it was well fed because they also had a tame bird as well. Carmen loved to go out for meals to Weatherspoons and other places, but especially at her favourite place to eat, the Beach House Bistro, situated on the front on the prop in Blackpool. The favourite meal was chicken tikka masala. Although when it was the kids' grand anniversary, on the 11th of October, they pushed the boat out and had lobster for their meal, which wasn't cheap, I may add. That would set you back something like 45 quid. Her bucket list included going on the big wheel at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, which she fulfilled, although Carlo started shaking the seat, which didn't go down very well at all. Now, Carmen had a mouth like an Irish nabbit. <laughs> so you can imagine the expletives that issued forth. The taste in music was quite eclectic. She loved reggae, Bob Marley, Damien Marley, Nina Simone and music from her Jamaican roots. She loved to watch Netflix, Corrie, programmes presented by David Attenborough, and was obsessed by Love Island. She also loved plants and flowers and little statues to put into a garden and would have a few drinks and smoke there as well. <laughs> Carmen was the free spirit who led a crazy, colourful life and had a lifetime of beauty. And I have to tell you about the recent time when she kissed Jeannie. <laughs> First girl she ever kissed. <laughs> that caused a few raised eyebrows, not least from Carmen herself. <laughs> Carmen was naturally funny, even though she couldn't see it herself. Greedy as well, and with her, it was a what you see is what you get kind of girl. She had tons of love, peace, and kindness and generosity. But sadly, as Carmel told me, 
no patience or self-control, <laughs> but she certainly enjoyed life and beating her cancer. Carmen loves all her family from Jamaica, and I want to read out to you a tribute, tribute from Uncle Norman. He writes, I first met Carmen back in 1999 when I visited the UK for the first time. She was happy to meet me, warm, friendly and always pining over a job. What an experience and a pleasure it was to have met her. Carmen is the third grandchild for Cleveland and Violet Reed, my parents, and she would always boast of her Jamaicanness, which can't be denied. We met again in 2022 when I again visited. This time we met in Blackpool. We ate fish and chips, <coughs> sat close to each other, took selfies, and walked by the beach with icy cold wind hitting our faces. And then he goes on to say, if I had only known that that visit would be our last, I would hold you tighter. If I had only known that that meal would be our last, I would have told you how much I love you and showered you with kisses. If I had only known those selfies would be our last, I would have put the camera on autoplay. We do know that if love and tears and prayers could bring you back, you would be here, smiling with us. Rest in peace, Carl. We love you. And it's signed from Uncle, Uncle Henry, Uncle Norman, Auntie Elsie, Auntie Rona, Auntie Doreen and Auntie Pam. Isn't that lovely? <coughs> now let me invite Chelsea, Kenwood and Damien to come out and read to us some poems. <coughs> Try not to stay soft. Now back in the house. 